Um, I want to bring in now NBC News chief international correspondent Richard Engel um, to talk more about this. He's on the ground for us in um, Jerusalem. Take us there, uh, Richard. What are you hearing? What are you seeing? So just a short while ago, we heard Israeli jets flying over the sky here. Air defenses have been intensified all across the, the all across this country, all across the region. You mentioned a short while ago that Jordan has closed its airspace. Uh, the Israeli uh, military has also issued directives for people to follow as this slow motion attack is underway. Uh, for the next 48 hours, uh, all gatherings over a thousand people have been banned. Uh, there'll be no school, no university, no daycare facilities. Uh, the military told, tell, went on camera, gave a statement telling people to take this threat seriously, that drones have been launched, that they were launched from inside Iranian territory, that they are on their way, but that they will take several hours to get here. Uh, it is roughly 700 miles between the Israeli border and the, uh, the, the Iranian border. Uh, drones don't fly particularly quickly, so we don't know exactly when uh, they are going to arrive if, if they're not shot down ahead of time. And it does seem quite possible that they could be shot down ahead of time because so much uh, was anticipated about this attack. President Biden knew it was coming. The intelligence services in the United States across the region have been warning this kind of thing could be coming uh, for the last several days with those warnings becoming more and more intense. But uh, Israelis were told, take this seriously, go to the shelters, and we will inform you if there are other attacks coming. Uh, it is possible that these uh, these drones are only part of a larger coordinated attack, that there could be uh, ballistic missiles also involved in this or cruise missiles, which are, uh, are harder to stop than the, the, the slow moving drones. But for now, that is where we are here in, in Israel, here in, in Jerusalem, where this slow motion attack is underway and Israelis are being told to stay calm, be vigilant, but follow instructions as these as these explosive laden drones get closer. I'm hearing traffic in the background. I'm hearing horns honking, um, Richard, but I'm wondering if you've kind of sensed at all a temperature change. And I don't mean hot to cold, but more a temperature change amongst the Israeli people with the launching of these drones. No, uh, you do not sense that this country is in panic. Uh, there are some cars out on the streets. Earlier tonight, uh, there was a, a demonstration in Tel Aviv against Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, who people here, uh, the demonstrators feel, uh, is not handling the war correctly, is putting his own personal uh, career ahead of the country. Uh, they were out on the streets despite these warnings. Uh, this is this is believe, we believe that this is happening under uh, right now, uh, but there was a threat that this could happen yesterday. Uh, so Israel has been on edge that this reprisal could be coming for the last, say, 48 to 72 hours. People have been out on the street. Uh, people have been going about their business, going to restaurants. Uh, but right now, uh, the Israeli uh, military is telling people, do not uh, take this lightly, take this very seriously. It's going to take several more hours for these drones to arrive. Uh, there are also now uh, reports on the Israeli media that we're still working to confirm that uh, another wave has potentially been launched. So this is still uh, very much a, a, a developing situation. So for now, uh, I think the, the country is tense, uh, but the streets have not have not cleared out. We've been talking a lot about um, Iran's proxies and how they have been continuous in their assault on, on Israel throughout the Israeli-Gaza war. Um, and Aaron David Miller talked about how if Iran wanted to hit um, Israel directly, um, he would have um, gotten his bullet to do it. And instead, they're going about it this way. Talk us through, Richard, if you will, some of what we've seen from Iran's proxies leading up to this moment. Well, I think it was Ben Rhodes you had on earlier said the key to watch is, is this it? Uh, is this the finality of Iran's response to the attack on its uh, embassy compound in Damascus two weeks ago that killed seven Iranians from the Revolutionary Guard, including a very senior uh, general from the Quds Force, which is their external uh, wing that is responsible for carrying out attacks by Hezbollah, by Iranian-backed militias in Iraq and Syria? And uh, if it is, then it seems like this could easily be contained uh, because slow moving drones that the Israelis see almost as soon as they are launched, uh, they see them with uh, American support. The U.S. military has been helping them. Uh, that, that is a sign that there could be a sign that Israel 
uh, that, that Iran doesn't want to escalate this any further. But we do not know yet. Uh, the, the drones, according to the Israelis, are still in the sky, still on their way here. Uh, their potential, uh, potential of, of a second wave, uh, and, and, and we really don't know if there will be other attacks uh, that could be involved. Are these diversionary attacks? Are there ballistic missiles? I think we're going to learn a lot more about what Iran's uh, intentions are on how it, it plans to respond to the attack two weeks ago in Damascus as this unfolds between now and, and potentially daybreak tomorrow here. So, Richard, I've, I've reported both in Israel and Iran, and when I saw the news come through that Iran had launched this attack, um, I got the chills because of the unprecedented moment we are potentially at, a, a direct conflict between Iran and Israel. And we don't know, as you mentioned, as all of my other panelists have talked about, what will come next. But the potential of what could become is incredible, really, to think about this direct Iran on Israel conflict. Well, the Israeli foreign minister has already said that if an attack is launched from Iranian territory and hits Israeli territory, then Israel will respond by attacking Iranian soil. Uh, Iran has already said, the Iran supreme leader, that it believed the attack on the consular annex uh, at its embassy in Damascus two weeks ago was an attack on Iranian soil. So uh, we're talking that language already where the two, the two countries are discussing direct assaults on each other, not through proxies. So it would be uh, a new phase of this conflict. For the last six months, Iran has been uh, attacking uh, Israel. And Israel has been attacking Iran, uh, but going through the proxies, including Hezbollah and, of course, Hamas, which is supported by Iran. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.